Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my winning the lottery press conference. First off, I would like to thank my new manager that I was able to hire thanks to these winnings, Mr. William Wyatt. Second, I would like to thank God for blessing me and my family with these lottery winnings. If you don't know me, my name is Nicholas Galicio. I am 21 years old. Um, I'm a student at the University of Tampa, so I currently reside in Tampa, Florida, but originally I am from Connecticut. Um, my, the rest of my family actually lives in Connecticut still. I have a brother who's at the University of Connecticut, a sister um, who's in high school, and another sister who's in middle school. And my parents, uh, Nick and Jamie, also live up there. Um, so let's get down to how I'm going to distribute my money. Um, most people, I don't know if you've seen any of those shows, uh, like Winning the Lottery, but a lot of those people get this check and they just think, oh, I'm going to be able to buy anything, and they burn through it in a year. I, Because I am an entrepreneurship major and have had some experience because of my father's businesses, I know how to manage wealth, and I really just want to invest money and make it grow, not just watch it shrink away. But, you know, because I did just win $200 million, I think that I'm going to have to spoil myself a little bit. And the first thing that I think I'm going to buy is a big house on Bayshore. I want it on Bayshore because I've been going to the University of Tampa for three years and I've driven down Bayshore Boulevard. I've jogged it. I've biked it. I've worked out on it. And, you know, just everything about it is just so awesome. And I just think that being able to wake up each morning, step out my front door and be able to take a walk with my dog or with my family on Bayshore Boulevard would just be so, so amazing. And yeah, that's that's why I think the first thing that I would buy is a big house on Bayshore because I know that I want to stay in Tampa. Um, but with this big house, you know, there's going to be some empty garages and I have extreme passion for cars. So I think I would go right to the car dealership after I closed on that house. And the first car that I would buy would be a Lamborghini Aventador SVJ. Um, not only are these cars fast, but they handle really well. Um, they have the newest record on the Nürburgring. And yeah, I just think that they're show-stopping cars. But the problem is they only have two seats. And I'm expecting to have a family. So I think I would also have to buy the SUV version of the Lamborghini. So I would have to go out and buy a Lamborghini Urus too. Um... And that's not all I would buy with my car, but I think, or with my money, but those are the first three things that come to my mind before I would spend money on my family. And how I'm going to start spending money on my family is taking them on a luxurious trip to Bora Bora. My family always talks about going to Bora Bora. My sister always talks about it because she sees it on TikTok and Instagram and I just think it would be really cool for me to be able to personally take my family there and not have them worry about any of the expenses. Um, the next thing I would buy for my family, <clears throat> excuse me, is a Ferrari 458. Um, I would buy this especially for my dad because my dad has a love for Ferraris, but obviously with having four kids, he hasn't really been able to buy one. So I think that would be a really cool opportunity for me to give back to him a car because he did buy my first car for me. Um, I would also buy my mother a Mercedes G-Wagon because she just thinks they're really cool and um, she's always wanted one, but they're not, they haven't really been practical for having four kids. So I think she finally would be able to get one of these as her like daily driver, which would be really cool and an amazing experience for me to gift her one of those because she's wanted one for so long. But enough about me and my family. I want to tell you about what good I want to do with this money. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and donate $70 million to the Special Olympics to start. Um, this is because I've always volunteered with the Special Olympics, like especially when I was younger. My aunt actually ran the Connecticut division of the Special Olympics, so I've always been around it, volunteering on the weekends, playing floor hockey, soccer, and basketball. And I just think that it's an amazing company, um, and what they do for the people with disabilities just really, it really brings a smile to my face. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Special Olympics. 
Uh, their mission, uh, quoted right here, the mission of the Special Olympics is to bri provide year-round sports training and athletic competition in a variety of Olympic-type sports for children and adults with intellectual disabilities, giving them continuing opportunities to develop physical fitness, demonstrate courage, experience joy, and participate in sharing of gifts, skills, and friendship with their families, other Special Olympics athletes, and the community. And I really like how they talk about joy because when you're there, you do really get to firsthand see the joy that these people do experience. Um, a little history about the Special Olympics. It was founded in 1968 by Eunice Shriver, and they spend over $100 million a year on stuff for the Special Olympian athletes. So this includes stuff like basketballs, hockey sticks, uh, hockey pucks, bicycles. Um, you really do not have to spend any money when you are becoming like a Special Olympic athlete. They provide you with everything so you don't have to bring your own basketball or anything. And they do receive a lot of donations. I know personally, um, my father has actually donated one of the tricycles to um, one of the athletes which was a really cool experience because one of them lived in our neighborhood, so he, he bought them a bike. Um, and the overall thing that they do is they just provide activities for people with disabilities who aren't really getting the, the experience at home that would be able to keep them in shape. And um, they get to really bond with people who are like them, like they don't get the experience like you and I do where we can go to school and we can meet someone who's just like us. They don't really get that often. So this is just like bringing them all together and showing them that they can play sports like you or I. And it's just really a touching experience. And you know, you see in these two pictures right here, the joy that they're experiencing. And I, w I wish I had some of the pictures that I took when I was younger, but I think I was doing this before iPhones were even invented. So I don't have those pictures at hand. I tried to get my aunt to fish through some, but she couldn't find them. Um, and that's that for what I would do for people. Um, my next thing is a pet project. Um, I really think that I would like to invest money into exotic cat rescue. Um, what I would do is I would buy, take my $30 million about, and I would buy large land and I would preserve it and I would offer, not offer, but I would stock this land with numerous animals that tigers and lions and big cats would be able to hunt in the wild. And they're not being able to hunt on other preserves like that because they're being neglected. Um, they This causes them to mentally deteriorate because they're not able to hunt to their full potential as they would in the wild. So I would like to buy a big enough piece of land for them to be able to hunt as they would in the wild. And my reason for this is because I don't know if anyone has seen the new documentary um, on Netflix, Joe Exotic, but it, sh it was the real mistreat of tigers and big cats in America. These cats are bred and they're used to make money. Um, for like cub petting in zoos and then they're just euthanized once they have no use because the zoos that are taking them do not have the capacity or the money to provide food for these these cats because they do eat so much and i think that i would be able to with this money um provide for these cats as they would they would need in the wild um you can see in this picture just them getting hunted and I, I really want to get away from that and let these cats live how they would in the wild without the risk of poachers and people taking them and using them as pets because it's just cruel and I, I really don't want to see that happen anymore um and yeah that's that's really what I would do with my money um I want to thank you guys once again for coming out here and listening to my press conference on how I won the lottery. And I hope you guys agree with what I want to do with my money. Yes, it's selfish to go out and buy um, cars that are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars and houses. But, you know, 
I want to be able to give back to, which is why I want to donate to the Special Olympics. And I'm really glad that I chose that and that I've had this experience before. So it made the, the decision process of what I would donate to very easy because not many times you're, be, you're going to be able to experience firsthand what charities do or what organizations do for people. But I was able to volunteer there and I was able to see the joy that it physically put on these people's faces when they were able to score a basket or um, be able to ride a bike that they would never be able to have because their family couldn't afford it. And it just really put a smile on my face and that's why I wanna take my money and donate it to them. Thank you once again for listening and also thank you to my manager for putting this presentation together for me. Have a great day.